Newfoundland, locally, French, Terra Nove is a large Canadian island off the east coast of the North American mainland, and the most populous part of the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador. It has 29% of the province's land area. The island is separated from the Labrador Peninsula by the Strait of Belle Isle and from Cape Breton Island by the Cabot Strait. It blocks the mouth of the St. Lawrence River, creating the Gulf of St. Lawrence, the world. S largest estuary. Newfoundland's nearest neighbor is the French overseas community of Saint-Pierre and Miquelon. With an area of 108,860 square kilometers (42,031 square miles), Newfoundland is the world's 16th largest island, Canada's fourth largest island, and the largest Canadian island outside the North. The provincial capital, Saint John. S, is located on the southeastern coast of the island. Cape Spear, just south of the capital, is the easternmost point of North America, excluding Greenland. It is common to consider all directly neighboring islands such as New World, Twillingate, Fogo, and Bell Island to be part of Newfoundland, as distinct from Labrador. By that classification, Newfoundland and its associated small islands have a total area of 111,390 square kilometers, 43,008 square miles, according to 2006 official census Canada statistics. 57% of responding Newfoundland and Labradorians claim British or Irish ancestry, with 43.2% claiming at least one English parent, 21.5% at least one Irish parent parent, and 7% at least one parent of Scottish origin. Additionally 6.1% claimed at least one parent of French ancestry. The island's total population as of the 2006 census was 479,105. History Long settled by indigenous peoples of the Dorset culture, the island was visited by the Icelandic Viking Leif Eriksson in the 11th century, who called the new land, Vinland. The next European visitors to Newfoundland were Portuguese, Basque, Spanish, French and English migratory fishermen. The island was visited by the Genoese navigator John Cabot Giovanni Cabado, working under contract to King Henry VII of England on his expedition from Bristol in 1497. In 1501, Portuguese explorers Gaspar Corte Real and his brother Miguel Corte Real charted part of the coast of Newfoundland in a failed attempt to find the Northwest Passage. After European settlement, colonists first called the island Terra Nova, from New Land in Portuguese and Latin. On August 5, 1583, Sir Humphrey Gilbert claimed Newfoundland as England. S first overseas colony under royal charter of Queen Elizabeth I of England, thus officially establishing a forerunner to the much later British Empire. Newfoundland is considered Britain's oldest colony. At the time of English settlement, the Beothuk inhabited the island. Lanceau Meadows was a Norse settlement near the northernmost tip of Newfoundland Cape Norman, which has been dated to be approximately 1,000 years old. The site is considered the only undisputed evidence of pre-Columbian contact between the Old and New Worlds, if the Norse Inuit contact on Greenland is not counted. Point Rosie, in southwest Newfoundland, was thought to be a second Norse site until excavations in 2015 and 2016 found no evidence of any Norse presence. The island is a likely location of Vinland, mentioned in the Viking Chronicles, although this has been disputed. The indigenous people on the island at the time of European settlement were the Beothuk, who spoke an Amerindian language of the same name. Later immigrants developed a variety of dialects associated with settlement on the island, Newfoundland English, Newfoundland French. In the 19th century, it also had a dialect of Irish known as Newfoundland Irish. Scottish Gaelic was spoken on the island during the 19th and early 20th centuries, particularly in the Codroy Valley area, chiefly by settlers from Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. The Gaelic names reflected the association with fishing. In Scottish Gaelic, it was called Eileen a Trogue, or literally, Island of the Cod. Similarly, the Irish Gaelic name Talam and Aisk means, Land of the Fish. First inhabitants The first inhabitants of Newfoundland were the Paleo-Eskimo, who have no known link to other groups in Newfoundland history. 
Little is known about them beyond archaeological evidence of early settlements. Evidence of successive cultures have been found. The late Paleo-Eskimo, or Dorset culture, settled there about 4,000 years ago. They were descendants of migrations of ancient prehistoric peoples across the high Arctic thousands of years ago, after crossing from Siberia via the Bering Land Bridge. The Dorset died off or abandoned the island prior to the arrival of the Norse. After this period, the Beothuk settled Newfoundland, migrating from Labrador on the mainland. There is no evidence that the Beothuk inhabited the island prior to Norse settlement. Scholars believe that the Beothuk are related closely to the Innu of Labrador. The tribe later was declared extinct, although people of partial Beothuk descent have been documented. The name Beothuk meant people in the Beothuk language, which is often considered to be a member of the Algonquian language family, although the lack of sufficient records means that it is not possible to confidently demonstrate such a connection. The tribe is now officially said to be extinct, but evidence of its culture is preserved in museum, historical, and archaeological records. Shanadathit, a woman who is often regarded as the last full-blood Beothuk, died in St. John's in 1829 of tuberculosis. However, Santu Toni, who was born around 1835 and died in 1910, was a woman of mixed me. KMAQ and Beothuk descent which means that some Beothuk must have lived on beyond 1829. Her father was a Beothuk and mother a me. KMAQ, both from Newfoundland. The Beothuk may have intermingled and assimilated with Innu in Labrador and me. KMAQ in Newfoundland. Oral histories also suggest potential historical competition and hostility between the Beothuk and me. KMAQ. The me. KMAQ, Innu and Inuit all hunted and fished around Newfoundland before the arrival of Europeans, but no evidence indicates that they lived on the island for long periods of time and would only travel to Newfoundland temporarily. Inuit have been documented on the Great Northern Peninsula as late as the 18th century. Newfoundland was historically the southernmost part of the Inuit's territorial range. When Europeans arrived from 1497 and later, starting with John Cabot, they established contact with the Beothuk. Estimates of the number of Beothuk on the island at this time vary, ranging from 700 to 5,000. Later, both the English and French settled the island. They were followed by the Mi. KMAQ, an Algonquian-speaking indigenous people from eastern Canada and present-day Nova Scotia. As European and me, KMAQ settlement became year-round and expanded to new areas of the coast, the area available to the Beothuk to harvest the marine resources they relied upon was diminished. By the beginning of the 19th century, few Beothuk remained. Most died due to infectious diseases carried by Europeans, to which they had no immunity, and starvation. Government attempts to engage with the Beothuk and aid them came too late. The Beothuk were exceptionally hostile to foreigners, unlike the Mi'kmaq. The latter readily traded with Europeans and became established in settlements in Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> European contact, colonization and settlement <laughs> Newfoundland is the site of the only authenticated Norse settlement in North America. This archaeological site was discovered by Norwegian explorer Helga Ingstad and his wife, archaeologist Anne Stein Ingstad, at Lance O Meadows in 1960. The site has been the subject of multi-year archaeological digs in the 1960s and 1970s. These have revealed that the settlement dated to more than 500 years before John Cabot, it contains the earliest known European structures in North America. Designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO, it is believed to be the Vinland settlement of explorer Leif Eriksson. The Icelandic Skalholt Vinland map of 1570 refers to the area as Promontorium Winlandiae and correctly shows it on a 51 degrees north parallel with Bristol, England. The Norse stayed for a relatively short period of time, believed to be between 999 and 1001 AD. Before and after the departure of the Norse, the island was inhabited by Aboriginal populations. Topic: <inaudible> Discovery by Cabot. Topic: About 500 years later, in 1497, the Italian navigator John Cabot, Zuan Giovanni Caboto, became the first European since the Norse settlers to set foot on Newfoundland, working under commission of King Henry VII of England. 
His landing site is unknown but popularly believed to be Cape Bonavista, along the island's east coast. Another site claimed is Cape Bald, at the tip of the Great Northern Peninsula. A document found in the Spanish National Archives, written by a Bristol merchant, reports that Cabot S crew landed 1800 miles 2900 kilometers west of Dursey Head Ireland latitude 51 degrees 35 in which would put Cabot within sight of Cape Bald This document mentions an island that Cabot sailed past to go ashore on the mainland This description fits with the Cape Bald theory as Belle Isle is not far offshore Topic Other European explorers After Cabot, the first European visitors to Newfoundland were Portuguese, Basque, Spanish, French and English migratory fishermen. In 1501, Portuguese explorers Gaspar Corte Real and his brother Miguel Corte Real charted part of the coast of Newfoundland in a failed attempt to find the Northwest Passage. Late in the 17th century came Irish fishermen, who named the island Talamanaisk, meaning, "...land of the fish", or, "...the fishing grounds." in Irish Gaelic. This reflected the abundance of fisheries. Colonization In 1583, when Sir Humphrey Gilbert formally claimed Newfoundland as a colony of England, he found numerous English, French and Portuguese vessels at St. John's. There was no permanent population. Gilbert was lost at sea during his return voyage, and plans of settlement were postponed. On July 5, 1610, John Guy set sail from Bristol, England with 39 other colonists for Cooper's Cove. This, and other early attempts at permanent settlement failed to make a profit for the English investors, but some settlers remained, forming the very earliest modern European population on the island. By 1620, the fishermen of England's West Country dominated the east coast of Newfoundland. French fishermen dominated the island's south coast and northern peninsula. After 1713, with the Treaty of Utrecht, the French ceded control of south and north shores of the island to the British. They kept only the nearby islands of Saint-Pierre and Miquelon, located in the fish-rich Grand Banks off the south coast. Despite some early settlements by the English, the Crown discouraged permanent, year-round settlement of Newfoundland by migratory fishery workers. Thomas Nash was an Irish Catholic fisherman who permanently settled in Newfoundland. He established the fishing town of Branch. He and his cousin Father Patrick Power of Callan, County Kilkenny, spread Catholicism in Newfoundland. This settlement attracted a major migration of Irish Catholic immigrants to Newfoundland in the early 18th century. By the late 18th century, permanent settlement increased, peaking in the early years of the 19th century. The French name for the island is Terra Nova. The name, Newfoundland, is one of the oldest European place names in Canada in continuous geographical and cartographical use, dating from a 1502 letter. It was stated in the following 1628 poem, a skeletonical continued rhyme, in praise of my new found land Although in clothes, company, buildings fair With England, new found land cannot compare Did some know what contentment I found there Always enough, most times somewhat to spare with little pains, less toil, and lesser care Exempt from taxings, ill news, lawing, fear If clean, and warma, no matter what you wear Healthy, and wealthy, if men careful are With much much more, then I will now declare I say, if some wise men knew what this were I do bell you they d live no other where, from The first book of Kavodlabets Composed and done at Harbour Grace in Britanniola, anciently called Newfound Land by Governor Robert Heyman 1628. A new society The European immigrants, mostly English, Scots, Irish and French, built a society in the New World unlike the ones they had left. It was also different from those other immigrants would build on the North American mainland. As a fish exporting society, Newfoundland was in contact with many ports and societies around the Atlantic Rim. But its geographic location and political distinctiveness isolated it from its closest neighbors, Canada and the United States. Internally, most of its population was spread widely around a rugged coastline in small outport settlements. 
Many were distant from larger centers of population and isolated for long periods by winter ice or bad weather. These conditions had an effect on the cultures of the immigrants. They generated new ways of thinking and acting. Newfoundland and Labrador developed a wide variety of distinctive customs, beliefs, stories, songs and dialects. Effects of world wars The First World War had a powerful and lasting effect on the society. From a population of about a quarter of a million, 5,482 men went overseas. Nearly 1,500 were killed and 2,300 wounded. On July 1, 1916, at Beaumont Hamel, France, 753 men of the Royal Newfoundland Regiment went over the top of a trench. The next morning, only 68 men answered the roll call. Even now, when the rest of Canada celebrates the founding of the country on July 1, many Newfoundlanders take part in solemn ceremonies of remembrance. The Second World War also had a lasting effect on Newfoundland. In particular, the United States assigned forces to the military bases at Argentia, Gander, Stephenville, Goose Bay and St. John's. Newfoundland and Labrador is the youngest province in Canada. Newfoundland was organized as a colony in 1825, was self-governing from 1855 to 1934, and held dominion status from 1907 to 1949 see Dominion of Newfoundland. In June 22 and July 3, 1948, the population of the colony voted 52.3% to 47.7% in favour of joining Canada as a province. Opposition was concentrated among residents of the capital St. John's, and on the Avalon Peninsula. <laughs> Union with Canada Newfoundland joined Canada on March 31, 1949. Union with Canada has done little to reduce Newfoundlanders' self-image as a unique group. In 2003, 72% of residents responding identified first as Newfoundlanders, secondarily as Canadians. Separatist sentiment is low, though, less than 12% in the same 2003 study. The referendum campaign of 1948 was bitterly fought, and interests in both Canada and Britain favoured and supported Confederation with Canada. Jack Pickersgill, a Western Canadian native and politician, worked with the Confederation camp during the campaign. The Catholic Church, whose members were a minority on the island, lobbied for continued independence. Canada offered financial incentives, including a «baby bonus» for each child in a family. The Confederates were led by the charismatic Joseph Smallwood, a former radio broadcaster, who had developed socialist political inclinations while working for a socialist newspaper in New York City. His policies as Premier were closer to liberalism than socialism. Following Confederation, Smallwood led Newfoundland for decades as the elected Premier. He was said to have a «cult of personality» among his many supporters. Some residents featured photographs of «Joey» in their living rooms in a place of prominence. Flags of Newfoundland The first flag to specifically represent Newfoundland is thought to have been an image of a green fir tree on a pink background that was in use in the early 19th century. The first official flag identifying Newfoundland, flown by vessels in service of the colonial government, was the Newfoundland Blue Ensign, adopted in 1870 and used until 1904, when it was modified slightly. In 1904, the crown of the Blue Ensign was replaced with the Great Seal of Newfoundland having been given royal approval in 1827 and the British Parliament designated Newfoundland Red and Blue Ensigns as official flags specifically for Newfoundland. The red and blue ensigns with the Great Seal of Newfoundland in the fly were used officially from 1904 until 1965, with the red ensign being flown as civil ensign by merchant shipping, and the blue being flown by governmental ships after the British tradition of having different flags for merchant, naval and government vessel identification. On September 26, 1907, King Edward VII of the United Kingdom declared the colony of Newfoundland, as an independent dominion within the British Empire, and from that point until 1965, the Newfoundland Red Ensign was used as the civil ensign of the Dominion of Newfoundland with the Blue Ensign, again, reserved for government shipping identification. 
In 1931 the Newfoundland National Assembly adopted the Union Jack as the official national flag, with the red and blue ensigns retained as ensigns for shipping identification. On March 31, 1949, Newfoundland became a province of Canada but retained the Union Jack in legislature, still designating it as the «national» flag. This was later reaffirmed by the Revised Statutes Act of 1952, and the Union Jack remained the official flag of Newfoundland until 1980, when it was replaced by the current provincial flag. See Province of Newfoundland and Labrador for continued discussion of provincial flags. Topic. Points of interest and major settlements Topic. Newfoundland has the most Dorset culture archaeological sites. The Beothuk and Mi'kmaq did not leave as much evidence of their cultures. As one of the first places in the New World where Europeans settled, Newfoundland also has a history of European colonization. St. John's is the oldest city in Canada and the oldest continuously settled location in English-speaking North America. The St. John's Census metropolitan area includes 12 suburban communities, the largest of which are the city of Mount Pearl and the towns of Conception Bay South and Paradise. The province's third largest city is Corner Brook, which is situated on the Bay of Islands on the west coast of the island. This was recorded as a discovery by Captain James Cook. The island of Newfoundland has numerous provincial parks such as Baraqua Pond Provincial Park, considered to be a model forest, as well as two national parks. Gross Moore National Park is located on the west coast. It was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1987 due to its complex geology and remarkable scenery. It is the largest national park in Atlantic Canada at 1805 square kilometers, 697 square miles, and is a popular tourist destination. Terra Nova National Park on the island's east side preserves the rugged geography of the Bonavista Bay region. It allows visitors to explore the historic interplay of land, sea, and man. L Anso Meadows is an archaeological site located near the northernmost tip of the island, Cape Norman. It is the only known site of a Norse village in North America outside of Greenland, and is designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is the only widely accepted site of pre-Columbian trans-oceanic contact. It has associations with the attempted colony of Vinland established by Leif Eriksson around 1003. The island has many tourism opportunities, ranging from sea kayaking, camping, fishing and hunting, to hiking. The International Appalachian Trail IAT is being extended along the island's mountainous west coast. On the east coast, the East Coast Trail extends through the Avalon Peninsula for 220 kilometers, 140 miles, beginning near Fort Amherst in St. Johns and ending in Capahaden, with an additional 320 kilometers, 200 miles of trail under construction. The Marble Mountain Ski Resort near Corner Brook is a major attraction in the winter for skiers in eastern Canada. Other major communities include the following towns Gander, home to the Gander International Airport. Grand Falls Windsor, a service centre for the central part of the island. Channel Port Ox Basques, the «Gateway to Newfoundland» as it is the closest point on the island to the province of Nova Scotia, as well as the location of the Marine Atlantic Ferry Terminal connecting the island to the rest of Canada. Stephenville, former location of the Ernest Harmon Air Force Base and currently the Stephenville Airport. Educational institutions include the Provincial University, Memorial University of Newfoundland whose main campus is situated in St. John's, along with the Grenfell campus in Corner Brook, in addition to the College of the North Atlantic based in Stephenville and other communities. Bonavista, Placentia and Fairyland are all historic locations for various early European settlement or discovery activities. Tilting Harbour on Fogo Island is a provincial heritage district, as well as a national cultural landscape district of Canada. This is one of only two national historic sites in Canada so recognised for their Irish heritage. Entertainment opportunities abound in the island's three cities and numerous towns, particularly during summer festivals. For nightlife, George Street, located in downtown St. John's, is closed to traffic 20 hours per day. The Mile One Stadium in St. John's is the venue for large sporting and concert events in the province. 
In March, the annual seal hunt of the harp seal takes place. Largest municipalities 2011 population. St. John's 106,172. Conception Bay South 24,848. Mount Pearl 24,284. Corner Brook 20,886. Paradise 17,695. Grand Falls Windsor 13725 Gander 11054 Tabe 7397 Portugal Cove Street Phillips 7366 Stephenville 6719 Clarenville 6036 Marystown 5506 Bay Roberts 5818 Topic. Geography topic. Newfoundland is roughly triangular, with each side being approximately 500 kilometers (310 miles) and having an area of 108,860 square kilometers (42,030 square miles). Newfoundland and its associated small islands have a total area of 111,390 square kilometers (43,010 square miles). Newfoundland extends between latitudes 46 degrees 36 and 51 degrees 38 N. Topic: Climate. Topic. Newfoundland is primarily characterized by having a subarctic or a humid continental climate Locations on the extreme southeast of the island receive sufficient maritime influence to qualify as having a subpolar oceanic climate Geology <inaudible> 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 The Terranuvian epoch that begins the Cambrian period of geological time is named for Terra Nova, the French term for Newfoundland. Topic: <laughs> Fauna and flora. Topic: <laughs> Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Newfoundlanders. Topic: <laughs> 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 Representation in fiction Topic Topic Novels Topic Newfoundland has been the setting for numerous modern novels Michael Crummy, Galore, 2011 Kenneth J. Harvey, Blackstrap Hako, 2008 Wayne Johnston, The Colony of Unrequited Dreams, 1998 Bernice Morgan, Random Passage, 1992 Bernice Morgan, Waiting for Time, 1995 Bernice Morgan, The Topography of Love, 2000 Peter Neary, and Patrick O'Flaherty, eds. By Great Waters, A Newfoundland and Labrador Anthology 1974. E. Annie Prue, The Shipping News, 1993, adapted as a film of the same name, released in 2001 Television The show Republic of Doyle is set in St. John's and many of its stars are from Newfoundland. Representation in art Topic. Newfoundland has been depicted in paintings and art. Frederick Edwin Church, The Icebergs, 1861 topic. In popular culture topic. Topic. Theater the musical Come From Away takes place in Newfoundland. The show tells the story of Operation Yellow Ribbon, the effort to help passengers stranded in Gander, Newfoundland in the aftermath of the 9 11 terrorist attacks. The island is home to many theatre festivals, including Rising Tide Theatre Festival, Gross Morn Theatre Festival, and Grand Bank Theatre Festival. 
Topic See also Topic Bakalu Island Flag of Newfoundland and Labrador Heritage Foundation of Newfoundland and Labrador Category Newfoundland and Labrador Topic References Topic Topic Further reading Topic Topic Modern Histories Topic Sean T. Cadigan. Newfoundland and Labrador, A History 2009 Search and Text Excerpt Peter Neary, 1996. Newfoundland in the North Atlantic World, 1929–1949. McGill Queen's University Press, Montreal, Quebec. Henry K. Gibbons, 1997. The Myth and Mystery of John Cabot, The Discoverer of North America, Martin Catt Publishers, Port Ox Basques, Newfoundland. Michael Harris, 1992. Rare Ambition, The Crosbys of Newfoundland. Penguin. ISBN 0-14-023220-6 Kevin Major, As Near to Heaven by Sea, Toronto, 2001 John Gimlet, Theatre of Fish, Hutchinson, London, 2005. ISBN 0-09-179519-2 Wayne Johnston, 1999. The Colony of Unrequited Dreams, Vintage Canada, Toronto, Ontario. ISBN 978-0-676-97215-3-0-676-97215-2 Vintage accounts Barnes, Capt. William Morris. When Ships Were Ships and Not Tin Pots, 1931. Available in digital format at Memorial University site here. Birkenhead, Lord. The Story of Newfoundland 2nd ed., 1920 192 pp edition Hatton, Joseph and Moses Harvey, Newfoundland, Its History and Present Condition, London, 1883 complete text online asterisk McKay, R. A. Newfoundland, Economic, Diplomatic, and Strategic Studies, 1946 online edition Malay, John Guile. The Newfoundland Guide Book, 1911, including Labrador and St. Pierre 1911, online edition, also reprinted 2009 Moyles, Robert Gordon, ed. Complaints as many and various, but the odd divil likes it. 19th Century Views of Newfoundland 1975. Pedley, Charles, History of Newfoundland, London, 1863 complete text online Prowse, D. W., A History of Newfoundland 1895, Current Edition 2002, Portugal Cove, Newfoundland, Boulder Publications, Complete Text Online Toke, Philip. Newfoundland as it was and as, London, 1878 Complete Text Online External links Government of Newfoundland and Labrador Religion, Society, and Culture in Newfoundland and Labrador